Oh, this is Mr. Hornsby 83 with a Mr. Hornsby one, uh, 83. Who said it? <laughs> oh, I thought that. Yeah. Mr. Hornsby 83. Who should have been champion? And I'm going to be doing, like, probably a, as long list of these, like, down the road, I'll be doing other ones. Right now, I'm going to focus on the 80s. And who should have been world champion in the 80s, whether it be WCW or WWF. Because at the time, those were the only two major companies. And when I get to the 90s, I'll talk about ECW and uh, WWF and WCW. So, um... Yeah, and I'm going to start out with one guy who always has been at the tip of my tongue of a guy. And I'm going to start with the WWF Championship. One guy who's always been at the tip of my tongue of a guy who should have had that title is one of the greatest performers, one of the greatest wrestlers in that time frame at that. And that is Mr. Perfect. Because, you know, he could speak well on the mic, he could entertain in the ring, he could wrestle very good, he was a good heel, he, you know, did anything and everything, you know, his matches sometimes were more exciting than Hogan matches or whatever and whatnot, and some of these people I'll be naming on this list too eventually did get the title, but not in the time frames I'm talking about, but, um, yeah, Mr. Perfect, I think, one of the greatest wrestlers ever in WWE history. One of the greatest wrestlers never to be WWF champion, or WCW champion for that matter. Alright, next up, uh, another big name guy, Million Dollar Man. He was, like, always the top heel. You know, he's the one that convinced Andre to turn on. Well, actually, Bobby Heenan did, but, you know, Million Dollar Man and, you know, Andre made a deal. And he should, uh, apparently there was plans to make him champion, but it never happened because Macho Man was supposed to win the Intercontinental Prize from Honky Tonk Man. Honky Tonk Man, I guess, politician didn't want to lose it to Macho Man, so they gave the Macho Man the WWF title. And, you know, you see where that went from there. I mean, Macho Man, though, one of the greatest wrestlers ever. And uh, I have to say, and I've said this time and time again, it's long overdue for him to be in the Hall of Fame. He should have been in there before guys like Stone Cold Steve Austin, guys like Edge. I mean, I respect Stone Cold, I respect Edge, but they shouldn't have went in the Hall before of Macho Man. But, yeah, Macho Man Randy, I mean, not Macho Man, Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase. Uh, he eventually got his own belt, the Million Dollar Belt down the line, but... Alright, I'm going to throw another name out here that might throw people off. Don Morocco. He was a top heel in WWF at the time. And he had matches with Hogan, but they never really gave him the title. But back then, this man was scared to take chances on certain guys, I'm guessing. But, yeah, Don Morocco was a pretty talented guy. He was, you know, he had the looks that Hulk Hogan had. He could do basically the same of what Hogan could do. And he had some great matches with Superfly Jimmy Snuka back in the 80s. And, you know, he never really got any recognition, any major titles, except for, I think, tag team. I believe he was an Intercontinental Champ or Champion, and which didn't last long, because I think he lost it, like, shortly after he got it. So, you know, yeah, here's a guy, and uh, I know what he's done in personal life, and he's a scumbag in real life and that. Jimmy Superfly Snuka. He was very over with the fans. He was very entertaining in the ring. He did a lot of crazy, justifying things. You know, guys like Mick Foley and that have tried to emulate stuff Jimmy Snooker did back in the day. You know what he did back in the day when he raped, I think, his girlfriend or raped and killed his girlfriend or wife or whatever it was. You know, he was still a pretty good wrestler. And, you know, I'll say that about another guy, but, you know. I don't condone what they did outside of the ring, because that was just disgusting. But, you know, in both cases, but you'll see what I'm talking about when I get to the 90s and 2000s and that. Uh, Alright, next up is, uh, let's see. Uh, Andre the Giant should have got the title sooner than what he did. He did get it toward the end of the 80s, only had it long enough to give it to the Million Dollar Man, and then, basically, that was it. 
with Andre, with, you know, all the years Andre was there, all the, you know, all the time Andre put butts in the seats for Vince McMahon, it was usually for the sideshow attraction, and, you know, yeah. Rowdy Roddy Piper, another guy, he was also a top heel at the time, too, he had a feud with Hogan, and I think WrestleMania 1 should have been Hogan and Piper for the title. It never happened because they had Piper team with Bob Orton. Uh, they had Mr. T and Hulk Hogan team up, and part of it was to promote Rocky, and part of it was, you know, to, you know, basically get Mr. T in there, which, you know, that would be the following year where he would fight Piper in a boxing match. But, um, by the way, some of WWE's boxing matches were jokes. I know I'm talking about people know what happened like around the Attitude Era time and that and you know uh, yeah Roddy Piper you know he was really hated by the fans he was so hated there was freaking people that actually just really really hated him in real life just didn't hate his character hated him as a person but yeah Piper was you know an amazing talent very good Another guy, again, he got the title uh, like toward the end of the 80s. Oh, yeah. He got the title toward the end of the 80s. Macho Man Randy Savage only got two rings in WWE. He got four in WCW, but most of them he didn't get to keep long. But this is about guys who didn't get the title. Jake the Snake Roberts. Another guy that really should have been champion, but they never gave him the title, never gave him a chance. I don't even think Jake the Snake had any titles in WWE. He was just a character, a mid carter never got a chance to be champion. I don't even think he got to fight Hogan for the title. I mean, guys like Bossman did, guys like King Kong Bundy did, but Jake the Snake never did, and, you know, he was a very psychological wrestler, and I can't believe he never won the title. All right, now I'm going to move over to WCW, because I can't think of really no one else who delivered the title of WWF in the 80s and other than the people I named and you know, some of them that I did name already got the title, but way later. But yeah, one guy I want to talk about, first off, Lex Luger. Should have been champion. Didn't get the title till the 90s after Flair and them were gone. And I think, you know, Lex Luger was, also got underutilized in another place that they talked about in the 90s one. But, yeah, Lex Luger, I was always a big Luger fan, so this is probably why I'm saying Luger, because I'm biased toward him, and that, um, yeah, the great Muda, one of the greatest underrated wrestlers ever, and you know, if people don't know who Great Muda is, you don't know wrestling, or you're not a fan, and I think Great Muda was really a great guy that you could have put the title around. He could have been a heel, he could have did, but you know, the Flair politicking and crap, you couldn't really do too much in the 80s. I mean, and when Flair would lose, he would lose to guys he felt like losing to, like friends of his like Dusty Rhodes or Terry Funk or Harley Race or, Funk or Sting or something like that. I mean, and that's one good thing about Flair, though. He did do what was best for the company. If he saw a guy that was getting hot, he would lose to him. It would take him a while to lose to him, but he still lost to him. But, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Great Muda. Um, Arn Anderson. I mean, this guy is one of the most underrated wrestlers as well. Never had a chance to hold the WCW title. He was probably champion. May have been U.S. champ. I don't know. I know he was tag champ. Um, so, yeah, he had every belt except for the world title. But then again, he was mostly Ric Flair's enforcer for the Four Horsemen. And, you know, <laughs> but, man, let's see, let me think of some other guys that were wrestling in the 80s that deserved to have the title but didn't have it. I mean, a lot of guys in the 80s that wrestled in WCW got the title more than WWF guys, but, um, hmm. I don't know. Oh, Rowdy Piper, he was in WCW. He could have got the title there, too, but... They never put the title on him, and I don't know why. He was a very talented wrestler. He was very entertaining. He was good as a heel. He drew butts into the seats, 
I mean, I was a fake Piper fan as a kid. I didn't care too much for him when he came to WCW during the NWO crap because at that point he had become irrelevant. And, you know, I think, honestly, with the NWO stuff, they could have freaking, they could have used some of their younger guys to really stand up against NWO and took some of the veteran guys and that and they didn't. Alright, let's see. It's hard to think of WCW as one I didn't keep too much track of it as a kid. And two, really, you know, most of the guys that were in there at the time did have the titles. Michael P. S. Hayes, yeah, there's a guy. I think he should have been champion. I mean, he was very entertaining. And basically, Shawn Michaels, I guess you could say, kind of mimicked P. S. Hayes, except for Shawn Michaels was in a little better shape than P.S. Hayes because if you see him back in the old days and you see him now, he was, <laughs> yeah, I mean, he was not fat, but he is fat now, but he wasn't fat or anything. He just wasn't, you know, he didn't have that look like a Slayer and a Sting and all those guys. But, well, I guess, you know, there's not too many people I can say that got dipped in WCW. Most of them got dipped in WWE, but. Not too many guys I could say because really I do know one thing. I didn't keep up with too much. I know a ton of guys held the title in the time frame. I know Lex Luger didn't get it until the 90s when Slayer left. And I know Vader, I forgot when he debuted in WCW, but he got it. And Sting eventually got it. If Sting had never got it in the 80s, I'd say Sting, but he got his in the late 80s. <laughs> but I'll have more people for WCW in the 90s video because well, I can't think of too many. Like, uh, I went back, checked the history, and a lot of those guys in that time frame did have the title. Uh, so, yeah. Sorry if it seems like a bad video. I just, you know, can't think of too many other guys that were one WCW champion or, you know, deserved to be champion at that time. I mean, Dustin Rhodes could be one, but I don't know. I don't know if he started in the late '80s and then busted into the early '90s, or if he was there in the '80s. But I don't think he was there because, you know. But yeah, I guess that'll do it for this video. My '90s one. I'll have more names. There's a lot of people that I feel got dipped in the 90s and the three companies because, you know, 90s came out with ECW, so. Oh, yeah, I just thought of one more guy. Cactus Jack. Yeah. The only other guy I can think of. But he eventually got his in 99. So, yeah, sorry about this video. If it was bad, I apologize. I promise my 90s one will be better. You know, I was pretty young in the 80s, but I do know, remember a lot of stuff, and I did go back and watch a lot of history, so, yeah. Alright, till Wednesday or Thursday, whenever I do my top of the table, peace out.